Network on Television, MTV, the monthly video newsletter for Seattle City Lights. I'm Sharon Bennett, and I work in community relations. For MTV's first edition, we're at Cedar Falls, America's first municipally owned hydroelectric generating plant, and Seattle City Lights' first generating resource. Cedar Falls began generating 90 years ago and is still going strong today. Our new superintendent, Roberta Palm Bradley, places a high priority on employee communication. So we asked Roberta what she hopes to accomplish using NTV. It's very important for people in the empowered organization to have information. And I'm going to try to bring that information to people in this organization in all different forms so that there will be a form that will catch the imagination of people. My co-host for NTV is Henry Yates. He's at the Seattle Center with our next story. Hi, I'm Henry Yates, the Utilities Intergovernmental Affairs Coordinator. The center is the site of this year's combined charities kickoff. The annual campaign allows each of us to contribute to the charitable organizations closest to our hearts. This year's goal is to have everyone participate and raise $105,000 from City Lights. Metro's campaign joined forces with the city this year to make an even stronger impact on the community. Again this year, City Lights video crew produced a combined charities music video. You won't be able to catch it on MTV, so make sure your work group has a chance to see it. Over the last several months, there have been a series of arson fires in our service territory. City Light joined with other City of Seattle departments in early October in an effort to fight this alarming crime wave. Concerned citizens packed the Ballard Eagles Auditorium to find out how the city is responding to the arson wave and how they can protect themselves and their property. City Light staff answered questions about how to use lighting, showed off examples of energy-efficient security lighting, explained street lighting policies, and what the utility is doing to help. Fall is in the air, and change is very visible here at Cedar Falls. And as we all know, things are changing at work, too. That's right, Sharon. Since the arrival of Roberta Palm Bradley in July, the entire city has been filled with talk of change at City Lights. The superintendent has met with employees on several occasions and has addressed civic organizations like the Seattle Rotary Club and the City Club. At all of these appearances, she's been asked about her plans for the utility. During the confirmation process and in interviews, She's given some insight into the work environment she wants to see evolve at City Lights. You've heard me talk several times about measurement. I am very, very strong on measurement. I think that if you don't keep score, you're just practicing. And we have no time in this utility to be practicing because the deregulation the dramatic changes in the workforce as well as the dramatic changes in the demands of our customers can't allow us to be practicing. We have to be able to stand up to the plate and say, yes, we're going to be responsive and we're going to, and we're going to be accountable for that. And change is difficult. I well, absolutely have gone through a lot of change over the last five months. Change is very, very difficult but it's also very necessary. Just to use another trite expression, and this is how I'll, I'll end it, our conversation, to use another trite expression, Will Rogers once said um, that even if you're on the right track, if you just stay there, you'll get one over. Change may be difficult, but many of our workers have learned to adapt. In fact, more than 40 of them have spent the last quarter century with Seattle City Light. The city's service awards recognize that effort. Throughout the summer, ceremonies were held at City Light locations to recognize more than 350 employees with from 5 to 45 years of service. Senior civil engineer Delbert Smith has been working for City Light since before Harry Truman was elected president. He worked on Ross Dam from 1947 until its dedication in 1949. You have to like your job. If you like your job, it comes easy, and then... Um, uh, you have to be dedicated to uh, finish your assignment. And uh, you go from assignment to assignment, and um, uh, like I say, um, working um, uh, for uh, any, <coughs> in any, any company or any, uh, you have a goal, uh, not just a personal goal, but you have a certain satisfaction in completing assignments. 
I think the first the first remarks which are enjoyed, you find that the time goes by relatively quickly. In a year when financial news has not always been good, our Skagit tours are a bright spot. The numbers are still coming in, but preliminary figures indicate that the Skagit tours will have the best season ever. Since J.D. Ross began the tours in 1928, they've always been a money-losing operation. The first step in turning around the tours' finances began last year. After months of careful shopping, we bought a larger boat and christened it the Alice Ross III in May. Because the new boat carries more visitors, it will help make our tours more profitable. J.D. Ross would be proud. This year we've implemented a few changes with ticketing procedures and such, which doesn't really affect the general public that much, but it does help us in order to make our stuff a lot more efficient. We cut down a lot of the redundancy that we had in the past. Next year we hope to eliminate it completely, and in three years' time it will have gone to where we've eliminated about 85% of the paperwork that we used to have in the past. That about wraps it up for our first edition. I hope you've enjoyed NTV. Sharon? We're still in the formative stages with NTV. We want to make it useful by bringing you news from around the utility, stories we won't see any other place. We're open to your comments and suggestions for future stories. Give us a call at Community Relations, 684-3112, or send your comments to NTV, room 809 in the City Light Building. For NTV, I'm Sharon Bennett. Thank you.